Hi guys, I'm back. So I wanted to cover these last two exponent laws that I didn't explicitly talk about in the last video, and I was just going to go over the solutions to question two for uh, number for section one point four. So let's take a quick look at these laws. So um, a times b all to the power of m. So it's two things being multiplied in the brackets to the power of m. This is just like I said in the last video for the very one of the first questions, maybe the second one, where each thing inside the bracket gets that exponent. Now, if this was a plus b, very, very different. It doesn't work this way. But since it's a times b, or it can be times c times d times e times a million other things, all to the same exponent, each of the things being multiplied gets that exponent. Very similar um, as multiplication and division are actually secretly the same thing. I won't go into that now, but feel free to ask me that one day. Um, when you have a division inside the bracket raised to the same exponent, each thing in the division gets that exponent as well. So a divided by b, all to the power of m, is a to the m divided by b to the m. And if a and b don't divide each other, then they just stay separate. See the example for an explanation. Let's look at question number two, and we'll kind of go through uh, applying each of these things uh, one at a time. Now again, if you can just click this link and it'll show you a list of steps, but I'm just going to walk you through where those steps come from. So to start, we have question 2a, where you have 3 to the power of 6 times 3 to the power of negative 4. First of all, go back to the question for a sec, and notice it says, use exponent laws to rewrite each expression as a single power and evaluate, which means for part a, I'm going to write this as 3 to the power of something as one step, and then I'm going to take another step and actually write it as what its evaluated thing is. So this is really important because if you just punch this into your calculator, yeah, you'll get an answer, but you're not actually answering the question. And so one of the main skills we have to talk about is reading the question carefully and making sure you're providing the answer being asked of you. This demonstrates your understanding of what the question's asking as well as the skill we are looking for. So make sure we are actually following all the steps. So going back to this question, we have here um, 3 to the 6 times 3 to the negative 4. And remember, we're multiplying two things of the same base. So this is the same thing as uh, 3 to the power of 6 plus negative 4. When you're adding integers, remember a plus minus situation results in just a minus. So this is the same thing as 3 to the power of 6 minus 4, which is the same thing as, well, 3 to the power of 2. So here we've written it as a single exponent. Now we evaluate. And 3 squared is 9. So just writing in one step equals 9 doesn't tell me anything about your understanding. You need to make sure you show me all your steps as well as answer the question in all its parts. Um, if you just wrote equals 9 and this question was like out of 3 or something like that, you got 1. So that's 33%. If you're satisfied with a 33%, cool. But most people aren't, so you probably want to show me at least some of your steps for one mark. Writing is a single evaluated exponent for another mark, and then the final answer for a third mark. For a question like part B, where you have a lot of stuff going on in the numerator, a lot of stuff going on in the denominator, once again, it's easiest to just simplify the numerator and the denominator separately. So I'm going to work out what 2 to the power of 3 times 2 to the power of 9 is, and that's 2 to the power of 3 plus 9. That's over 2 to the power of 8. Uh, simplifying the numerator, I get... 2 to the power of 12 over 2 to the power of 8. Um, and now I can apply the, the exponent law for division, which is subtracting the exponents, which is 2 to the power of 12 minus 8, which is 2 to the power of 4, which, as we know from a previous example, is 16. Not super bad, right? Just remember, take your time, show your steps, don't be lazy about this, and your calculator cannot do the thinking for you. Trusting your calculator to think for you is like trusting your hammer to design a house. It's a useful tool, but it can't actually do the job of a thinking human. And that's sort of the point of all this. For part C, we are going to apply the power to a power law for the numerator. And separately in the denominator, we are going to just work out this uh, multiplication rules where we're going to add all these exponents. So in the numerator, we have power to a power, so that's going to be 4 to the power of 2 times 3. I'll simplify that in my next step. 
And then in denominator, I force the power 3 times 4 times 4 to the power 4. This 4 by itself is actually to the power of 1, remember? So this will actually work out to be 4 to the power of 3 plus 1 plus 4. Simplifying each of these separately, the numerator becomes 4 to the power of 6, because that's 2 times 3, over 4 to the power of, well, 3 plus 1 is 4, plus another 4 is 8. Now I can actually write this as 4 to the power of 6 minus 8, which is 4 to the power of negative 2. And remember that reciprocal rule. I'm just going to push this up a bit so we can see it happen. Uh, where this is actually flip over the base. So 4 becomes 1 over 4, and now the exponent goes from being negative 2 to positive 2. And this is far easier to evaluate. If you punch in 4 to the power of negative 2 in your calculator, even if you manage to do it correctly, which is actually trickier than it sounds, um, you're just going to get some decimal from your calculator, unless your calculator is really clever and gives you the fractional answer. From here, we can just say, okay, well, this is 1 over whatever 4 squared is. So you can use your calculator to evaluate 4 squared. Go for it, and you'll find that it's 16. So this is 1 over 16. So applying these laws actually prevents us from making silly mistakes, trusting our calculator too firmly, and uh, make, letting a machine do our thinking for us, which is exactly how they're going to take over the world. So you got to be careful about that kind of stuff. Finally, this last question where you have 2 thirds, to the power of negative 2. Best thing to do is to apply the reciprocal law for the negative first, which means flip over the base. So this actually becomes 3 over 2, all to the power of 2. And the exponent law for, uh, for fractions, when you have a fractional base, means that both the 3 and the 2 get that exponent of 2. So this is the same thing. Let's actually just draw an illustration there, a little line saying, look, the 2 goes to the 3 and the 2. This becomes 3 squared over 2 squared, and we just evaluate each one separately. 3 squared is 9 over 2 squared is 4, and it is acceptable to leave that answer alone. Um, I don't care about your ability to write 9 divided by 4 into a calculator. What I'm more concerned with is your ability to apply these exponent laws. So 9 over 4 is actually a more valuable answer than, uh, what's that, 2.25 or something like that. Okay, so leave those fractions alone once you have whole number over whole number, unless it can be reduced easily and nicely. And that's it for this video, guys. I hope this was helpful.